What's going on, Jay? It is Eric P. Here, sir. Today, hopefully, this is just a one time deal where I'm gonna do two videos in one. But it's gonna be like a two in one video. It's, today's video is gonna be a race review and a race preview in one. So, don't be surprised if the video turns out to be 30 minutes. It's because, like I said, it's gonna be a two in one. And since. Indianapolis is this week, and um, Donington was last week, and I forgot to make a video about Donington. I've been busy with school, been busy doing other things, busy with school, and all. That's pretty much it. I've been getting stacked up with homework, so I don't really have enough time to get a video, so let's get to talking. For the third time this year, Danny Hamlin will lay the field to the green flag at six, about 6.10 central time. After about an hour delay, the green flag was, was originally dropped at 5.15, but there was rain in the area, and then there was a lightning, and so they pushed it back to 6.45, but then there was a lightning strike about 6.30, and the rule is they have to wait 30 minutes after the last lightning strike before they can send the cars out. Before they even can send the cars out to do pace lines. Um, and then um, pit stop started about lap 46. Kyle Larson, I think, pitted on the second go around. But lap 47 is when Kyle Larson pitted. And when it when everything cycled back, it went. Kyle Larson was out front. Actually, Kyle Larson. for entering pit row above the commitment square and I think that was 2 to 48 of Jimmy Johnson Kyle Larson will win stage 1 and I really like Larson so sorry I posted something now I'm uh, you guys a photo of it at the end and the car that will hopefully be in Victor Lane on Sunday um everybody pitted and then it went back green on lap 108. About uh, lap 128, I saw a car spinning. And then I was thinking it was Joey Gase because I saw someone with the Gase tag and I was like, because it was a throwback week and everybody was in the old pink scheme. So I thought it was thrown back to someone who also was the last name Gase. But at the same time, I was thinking it was Joey Gase. Turned out it was Joey Gase. And then. Went back green on 134. Um, with about 36 laps to go in stage two, they just had to go in and pit. I was like, I can't even get it because 134, yeah, yeah, you're kind of make, you barely kind of make it on fuel. You're probably gonna make it about that much on fuel. Probably just that much on fuel, barely. Um, 78 got a tire violation during these. Stage 2 winner. Kyle Larson. And, of course, they threw the caution. If you want to know why they threw these cautions, it's... Um... So... Uh... I'm thinking it's because, uh... To see who's gonna... How it could shape out, like if it's if it's like what happened at Michigan, where Clint Board won the race. Like, like they always want to think about weather, and plus, the rules have you, you got to get past halfway, and I think they have it this way. Have it the most easiest way possible is putting stages in, and well, all races except for one are three stages. Um. The one that isn't is the Coke 600. It's because that's the NASCAR's longest race and they decided just to split it up into four. And I believe Kai Bush won all four stages in that race. Oh wait, he did. 
in the Coke 600 this year. Back main on 208, um, during some pit stops, 19 has some, the 19 of Daniel Suarez had some tire issues. If you all want to know what I'm looking at, it's a, I mean, when I watch races, I make a list of what's going on so I can know what all happened. Like, like, this week, I'm doing the same thing I've been doing ever since I started to use race reviews and previews. Yeah. Okay. Um, car just, some car, so, towards the end, some cars like to split up, some drivers like to split up into three, some cars like to split up into four. Another person just liked my post. So I posted something, I'll show you a picture of it, or I may turn the camera at the end so y'all can see what it is, what I posted. Um, and then, um, Dustin Young gets a penalty, I don't remember what it was for, it was almost a week ago, so. And then, then the rest of the cars decide to do a two, kind of split it up into three. Jonathan, they have a little bit more fuel wear, I should say. And, that's why some people chose three, while other people chose two. Just split the race up and final stage into three versus four. I'm handling and have some issues during the first set of two stops. People on three stop strategy decides to pay on two lot uh, 287. Two strategy pits started with 56 laps to go. Back and forward with 55, 14, 31, and 96. Rest of the two stop strategy pits. Now we're on the back side. Uh, 45 to go, we went back to the green flag. Caution for debris. We have 39 to go. Boyer gets laid down by... Uh, Byron, William Byron. Green flag with 34 to go. With about 24 laps to go. The 96 bun. And, and and during the pit stops, the guy who was done all night car. Who wasn't as fast as Brad Kozlowski's. Brad Kozlowski came out with the lead. He went back in with 19 laps to go. And that's where you see, it's like, like on the restarts, Kyle, better have a good restart. Better have a and I was talking about Larson, you better have a good restart for Larson. You better, you better win this thing. Brad Kozlowski led the last 23 laps. The last 23 laps, Brad Kozlowski led. And, actually, I wasn't too upset. I was actually winning him the one race this year. Did it happen? Oh yeah, he won the, for the first time in 40 years, Pinsky went to victory lane at Donington. And Brad Kozlowski, who drives for Pinsky, won at Donington. He talked with his teammate Joe Logano in the second, and they talked with the guy who's been dominant all night, Kyle Larson. Kyle Larson said that uh, wasn't, that's his night at the end. Okay, we're done with that. We probably missed, but we're done with that now. Let's review Indianapolis. So, like I said at the beginning, Indianapolis is this weekend. And it's a rectangular kind of track. I'm, of course, going to have the same three I've been having in all year. Guy Bush, Martin Truex Jr., and Kevin Harvey. And, well, there could be a lot of garage picks for this one. And... Um, I'm thinking, like, let's say all three back out. Who do you think I'm going to have? Who is up next? Well, I think Pinsky could finally win at Indianapolis, so Joe Legano, Brad Kozlowski, or Ryan Blaney. If Ryan Blaney wins, all three teams Pinsky will be in. Well, they're in for sure, because 
at Bristol, they locked in the top 12. They said the top 12 were at so many points that they don't need to worry about Darlington or Indy. So they like, they had enough points, they're locked. Even all the people got, like basically it's winning, winning you're in. If you win, you're, you're probably going to try to stay top 30 in overall points for the rest of the season. Unless you get injured. And that's what they decided to do was lock those top 12 in. And Brad Kozlowski was a top 12 driver. He moved up from 10th to 4th Sunday a week ago. At Darlington, you moved up from 6th. From 10th in points to 4th in points with the win. Uh, and I was kind of surprised. It's like, how did he move up four positions? So I'm thinking it could be a Brad week. It could be a Ryan Blaney week. It could be a Joe Week and Logano week for Pinsky. I'm saying it's going to be a Pinsky kind of week for them at Indianapolis. Um, Who else? Who else should I throw in the mix here? I think um, Hendrix is going to be there at the end because this is Hendrix's best track. Team Hendrix's best track. Um, like I'm saying that Jimmy Johnson could probably win. Um, William Bryan could get his first career win. Alex Bowman could. Chase Elliott could get his second win. Like, huh? Chase Elliott gets his second win. What about his first? If you ask, if you are asking me this question right now, what about Chase Elliott's first? Go back and watch my Watkins Glen race review right right now. Stop watching this video right now and go back watching my race review on Watkins Glen because I said Chase Elliott won that race. So if you're right, what about Chase Elliott's first? You need to watch my Watkins Glen race review right now. Like, I'm not joking. There's some people who goes, hmm. but if you forgot, okay, that's a different story. But if you're just trying to be stupid, if you're trying to be stupid, like, just saying it, just go back and watch it right now. Not a joke. Even though I had to work, like, right after that race, but still. Um... I think it could be a Stuart Haas kind of week. It kind of been a Stuart Haas kind of year. Uh, sorry, I'm rocking back and forth in this chair, so that's why my head keeps doing that. It's rocking. Um, it's been a Stuart Haas kind of year, and if I have to choose one, who would I choose? Well, Eric Armarola. Has been running real good, and I think he needs to win. So, I think think this week he could get it. Um, Kyle Larson could finally get that win he's been looking for all year. He's been trying to win all year. Like all the times he tried this year, he finished second or third. So, I think it could be a Kyle Larson kind of year. Now, let's talk about, let's talk about the defending BKR 400 winner. So, last year, I was helping Guy Bush for the third year in a row he was going to win the BKR 400. 2015, 2016, and 2017 BKR 400 winner is what I was hoping for for Kyle Bush. And, Turned out because he came because Kyle Busch got into a little accident with Warren Truex. Anyway, let me cut to my point. Let me cut to what happened towards the end. Towards the end, everybody was basically kind of like jet to try to win it. Jimmy Johnson wrecked himself. Brad Kozlowski kind of Brad Kozlowski kind of helped. Um, Alright. And... Well... The guy who happened to be there at the end was Casey Kane. The race was delayed at the very beginning for about like like lap eleven. It was delayed for about one and a half hours. One and a half hours to the rain. 
the race was totally delayed was two hours thirty minutes because there was two other red flags in the race. Now those those were at the end, and the first red flag was a um I think um three cars it was a three car accident with Kurt Busch or one other I forgot who the other guy was and they red flagged the event like almost instantly and I got a feeling it was. I got a feeling it was, um, uh, I'm looking up. Uh, I got a feeling it was, um, and it wasn't a Stuart Haas card. No, it wasn't Trevor Bain. He was in one on the final restart, though. And so they red flagged that for about 30 minutes, and they were on the back stretch. And then I think in the first overtime attempt, it was, I think it was. The first overtime attempt, Um. there was a right before, after the, red, after the first red flag that happened. And, um. Then we then it was sent into overtime. On the first overtime attempt, this happened. Not even into turn one. It were I think Brakasovsky came out with the lead into turn one. Sorry. Um Expanded practices were canceled today due to rainy Indy, but mm, not even in turn one there was a huge rack on the front stretch. So right back from another their minutes, they almost had to call the race. Almost, they were this close to calling the race. Then they just they had this like overtime line, overtime line. It's to where so there was a line on the back stretch and. If they can get to it, they'll put out the white flag. If a ca another caution comes out before they get the white flag, they will wave the white flag. And then next time around, they wave the checkered. Well, no, I think they wave the white and the checkered together. I have no idea. As they took it out like two weeks later, they took. Two weeks later, I walked in the screen, they took it out. Why? I don't know. And I actually think the overtime line. Was pretty stupid. Like, like I just thought it was pretty stupid in the first place. Is because to me, in order to do a good attempt at a restart, is driving to the white flag. That's that's the way it should always. That's just the way it should always been. Is that if you can get the white flag, race is over. Next flag ends it. Like, I think that's the way it should always be, and it that's the way it's since last year at Watkins Glen. And that's the way it's been. If they can get the white flag, the next flag ends the race, and it should always be like that. <clears throat> and it's always been like that. Like I said, represent. It's been like that. And I love it this way because um, if I'm playing, if I'm in, if I'm a if, let's say I'm an actual basketball driver, for example, and um, I'm going overtime, and they said we have to race to the overtime line, and I, the only place I know how to pass is turn three. Caution comes up, turn, turn three, yeah, and they didn't, and then we cross the overtime line, second we cross the caution comes out, I go, darn it! Can't get to my pass, my favorite passing zone. So, that's why I like this white flag thing, and, well, before they took it out, Casey Kane was the last driver to win, that made it to the overtime line, and they made it to the overtime line, and then the caution came out, because then him and hit the wall, and the caution came out, and they, since it came out, like, the second they crossed the overtime line, they didn't really know, it should, should we try to restart it? Or should they try? 
to um, or should they just wave the white flag and just end the race like Casey Kane be the winner they said that Casey Kane did get to do overtime line before the caution came out so Casey Kane won the race but let me now let me come back why won't Casey Kane defend his title this year I'll do big care for him dude um, last night I was watching a lot of it. I was watching the um, championship celebration Billy. Really. Um, and Thursday night football. I just watched that, then I just stopped watching because I hate the Eagles. What is football to do with this? Shut up, let me finish. And I got a notification Casey Kane will be sliding line at the Brickyard 400 due to illness. So I opened it up read the story and said that he has some heat and exhaustion going on in that physicians, his physicians said until further notice they do not want Casey Kane who's in his final season to be in the car I was like, oh uh, yeah that's yeah you don't want him to get overheated again and they said that it could be something serious or something minor until they figure out what's wrong they do not want Casey Kane in his race car. Even the cars are air conditioning. They do not want him in the car. And I kind of thought that was fair. Like if I have to be outside my race car, because I have heat exhaustion going on, and I don't know if it's something serious or not. Don't know if I have something more serious. I'd rather stay out of the car. Like, like staying out of the car. Staying out of the car versus being in the car with hate and trust him. I choose to be out of the car. I do not want to be driving. Here, talk to me. Where did you just sit down? What happened? You passed out to you. There's heat and trust him. I do not want that to happen when one of my racers is like. He said he, mm -hmm. one thing you can probably do in the car on the racetrack is probably drive the pace car. That's it. Um. Oh yeah, y'all, y'all wondering like what? Now, since it's close to the end, I mentioned close to the end. I'll show you guys what I've been, what I posted on Rowdy Nation. I posted a, I made this actually about a week ago. Um, I was kind of new. My favorite Cabbage paint scheme, the Skittles with the American flag, because it's my favorite paint scheme. But and Cabbage is my favorite driver. But I did my second favorite because I don't know how to how to do it that way. So I did my second favorite Cabbage and name is Caramel. Um. So let me wonder. So I'm kind of present to y'all. So in my school, we have Thunder Call. Flags, which is basically study hall. I was bored, and well, I was in a, I was in art class that day, and I decided to draw this. And and I was like, I was like, what is there to draw? I was gonna do a chase. Let's see, I was gonna do a chase early at number nine Napa car, but then then I was like, oh, it's too hard to get the Napa and all that on. So, I just did this. Y'all may want to know, why are these checkered rectangles, like right next to my head? Why are they there? That is to represent the six wins Kadosh has in 2018. Like, I was, I was planning on, I wasn't planning on putting 49 checkered flags to represent the 49 career wins Kadosh has in the Cup Series. I, I decided to do um, 2018. Um, if y'all did not read the little. And then. I'm going to get back out. And then. Y'all can see right there. The track name that says Texas, Bristol, Richmond, Coke 600, Richard Charlotte, Chicagoland, and Pocono. And I'm hoping. This weekend. To add another, I want to add another 
but I'm not going to do that until he wins again. But um, that's Cup Series. He has some other winners in the Xfinity and Trucks this year, but this is going to be for Cup um, because well, that's the only series I watch. And plus, I have a different favorite drivers in, in Xfinity and um, Trucks. Sadler, Sadler, Algar, actually. I actually have two in trucks and one well, also have two in um no two in Xfinity two in trucks. I'm going to list them. I like Saturn and Justin Algar. And then for um trucks, Johnny Sauter and Noel Gregson. Noel Gregson is a KBM driver, so that's why I like him. Alright you guys, you guys know what to do now. Like subscribe, comment, favorite, be nice, cool, be awesome. I'm Eric Pate. I don't deal with the AIDS. See you later.